Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I've mentioned the brain differences between men and women and between trans people and non-trans people numerous times in arguments and past videos and I still get messages and comments telling me that I'm wrong and asking where's the evidence, where's your evidence, which is irritating because I've linked studies to brain research in earlier videos before. But this is an important area of discussion because if done so convincingly, it should help to show those who see transgender people, all transgender people, as attention-seeking lunatics, thanks largely to the trans-training retards, that those of us who are genuinely transgender have the science to back us up. I have some studies to go through with you, and for the sake of both brevity and simplicity, I'll be covering them very quickly, but they're all linked below for further reading if any of them strike you as particularly interesting. So, a 1995 study found some sex atypical differences in the stria terminalis of the brainstem when they studied transgender subjects, and as you can see, they were able to show that the volume of the central subdivision of the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis, uh, that's the area of the brain that is essential for sexual behaviour and will hereafter be referred to simply as the BSTC. Now, this area is larger in men than it is in women. However, a female-sized BSTC has been found in male-to-female transsexuals, and the size of the BSTC was not influenced by sex hormones and was completely independent of sexual orientation. And so this study was the very first to show us a female brain structure in genetically male transsexuals and so supports the hypothesis that gender identity develops as a result of an interaction between the developing brain and sex hormones. A study done in 2000 confirmed these findings, concluding that the number of neurons in the BSTC of male to female transsexuals was indeed similar to that of biological females. In contrast, the neuron number of a female to male transsexual was actually found in the biologically male range, rather than just appearing similar to it. Now, they sum up by saying that these findings clearly support the paradigm that in transsexuals, sexual differentiation of the brain and genitals may go into opposite directions, and this therefore points to a neurobiological basis for gender identity disorder. There are other studies that came to similar conclusions from 2000, but I'd like to skip forward a bit to a more recent study that was carried out in 2009. Now, this studied trans women who hadn't started hormone replacement therapy yet with MRI scans. It found that regional grey matter concentrations in trans women was similar to that of biological males, but that there was a significantly larger volume of grey matter in the right putamen compared to biological men, and they concluded that the white matter microstructure pattern in the untreated male-to-female transsexuals fell halfway uh, between the pattern of male and female controls. So the nature of these differences suggested that some fasciculi did not complete the masculinization process in male-to-female transsexuals during their brain development stages. Also, studies in 2011 looked in more detail at white matter differences in both trans men and trans women, and the results of the study looking at female to males again showed that their white matter microstructure pattern was closer to the pattern of biological males rather than biological females. Therefore, their brains were more similar to the gender that they felt rather than the sex they were born as, thus providing further evidence for an inherent difference in the brain structure of female to male transsexuals. In the study of the trans women, on the other hand, they found again that male to female transsexuals showed a significantly larger volume of regional grey matter in the right putamen compared to biological men. And these findings also provided further evidence that transsexualism is associated with distinct cerebral patterns, which supports the assumption that brain anatomy plays a role in gender identity. And in 2008, a study investigated the hypothalamic eucinate nucleus, and through this, they were able to show for the first time that the number of neurons in trans women was similar to that of biological females, and they proposed that the sex reversal of certain subnuclei in transsexual people is at least partly a marker of an early atypical sexual differentiation of the brain, and that these changes may very well belong to a complex network that could structurally and functionally be related to gender identity. Finally, 
an even more recent study in 2010 looked at neural imaging differences in spatial cognition between men and male to female transsexuals, both before and during their hormone therapy. And as you can see, their results confirmed previously reported deviances of brain activation patterns in transsexual men from men with gender identity disorder, and also corroborated the findings in a group of transsexual patients receiving cross-sex hormone therapy. This indicates that there are a priori differences between men and transsexual patients caused by different neurobiological processes or task-solving strategies, and that these differences remain stable over the course of hormonal treatment. Put simply, this means that they found trans women who had started hormone therapy and those who had not both equally exhibited strong activation in certain regions of the brain compared to that of biological males. What these studies confirm for us is that the brain does play a role in transgenderism, hopefully at least trying to silence those who like to claim that there are no observable differences um, you know, between the brains of males and females or trans people and non-trans people. But we do need to note that none of these studies that I've shown to you give us a cause for dysphoria. We see the differences, we don't see the cause, and we can also see that there are different reactions that take place in the brains of trans men than that of trans women. So when it comes to discussing the transgender brain, um, it would be wise to separate the two into different categories for, of study. You know, if you're going to talk about uh, trans women and trans men, best do it differently rather than talking about trans issues or transgender people you probably separate them because they're different, just like men and women are different. But the new research is going to be needed to answer the big questions about transgender people, because this area of study is very much still in its infancy. Now, I have always maintained that gender dysphoria is a mental illness, and as you need some level of dysphoria to be transgender, I have therefore held that all transgender people, to varying degrees, have a mental illness. Given the evidence points to a neurobiological basis for gender identity disorder, I believe that the condition is both psychological and neurobiological. And I say this because if it were purely neurobiological, then why do some trans people who fully transition, you know, the whole shebang, hormones, surgery, everything that they can possibly do, why do they do that? And then still, some of them still suffer from severe dysphoria while others are all but cured? Why do some trans folk lose most of their dysphoria through hormones with no further need or desire for surgery? Why is dysphoria cripping, cripplingly bad for some, but nothing but an inconvenient discomfort at times for others? I mean, these are questions that you could make a whole separate video on, so I don't plan on going into them now. But I hope that the studies that I've brought up have helped to clear some things up. For all the debates I've had with those on the far right, with those on the far left, with the trans-exclusionary radical feminists, with the fucking trans-exclusionary men's rights radicals if they exist, and then simply the retards of Tumblr, my hopes is that rather than waving off these studies, you will consider them and accept that the scientific evidence for transgenderism is there. Until next time everyone, take care of yourselves.